rotation of duties means that the same person should not be involved in in maintaining or doing some activity for long this actually creates a good amount of redundancy within the system and if at one point of time if suppose i have a data and i don't know what the data is no one in the organization knows what the data is except one person then that person can essentially go and change the data in the way he wants because no one can go and verify what the data means so it is always important that many people come to know many things about many data if that if that is not ensured then the organization will face the problem of what we call as a, it's something like one fellow owns the data and nobody else knows about the data and so if then he can go and change in whatever format he wants and nobody can go and verify so rotation of duties ensure that this particular problem is addressed it gives at least more than one people to have knowledge about every every information asset that the company possesses so now let us look at some of the systems which require very high level of integrity for example the customer accounts is an information which needs to be high level uh, which needs to have high level of integrity the master data the financial and non financial data the payroll systems all this needs to have very high level of integrity as with confidentiality the identification of user should be the key element of information security integrity policy so how do i go on ensure integrity first thing is i need to identify the user so how do we do this identification again we have the process of identification authentication and then we have what you call as the authorization all that we did for uh, the uh, the case of uh, the <coughs> all that we did for the case of confidentiality needs to be done here so a user identifies himself through a login then there is a password it's an authentic then an authentication happens then then there is an authorization and based on this authorization he he can now go and do certain actions do certain consistent actions on the data so what can a authenticated user do on different information assets inside the system so that it, its integrity will not be affected is basically dictated by the access controls so for us to ensure integrity we need to have access controls now we will look at different access controls that form at the basis of enforcing integrity when we look at protection against threats to integrity of course like confidentiality integrity can be compromised by hackers masqueraders etc the authorized users can also be a threat to integrity for they can go and corrupt programs accidentally or intention, intentionally and that could cause integrity issues i could give you a very simple example in many servers there are certain configuration parameters which are set at boot time so when the system boots it reads these parameters and based on the parameters the server does some action and the parameter remains same till you reboot the system again for example i root uh, there is a parameter a and i set it to a value 2 when the system boots it will read the parameters value as 2 and it will continue working when the system is working when i go and change that parameter value to 3 nothing will happen to the system but when you shut down the system and reboot the system that time it will read that value as 3 and start doing something different so let us take this type of a scenario 
Now many of these servers have some parameters if you set it to 1 it will share memory across applications that means your memory utilization becomes very good. If you set it as 0 then it does not share memory and then if you have very high memory intensive programs then the server will essentially crash. Now let us have one disgruntled employee who is maintaining the data center on the day when he is sent out just before leaving since still he has this authorization he can get just go and change this memory sharing parameter from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Nothing will happen immediately because it is a boot time parameter. After 5 or 6 months when the system boots up it will read this parameter as 0 and then what will happen? The system will crash, start crashing and it will be very difficult for the, somebody to come and find out this was because of this parameter change. So that, so what has happened there was a threat, there was essentially an integrity issue here where a configuration parameter has changed its value intentionally. So, so the threat to integrity can also be within the system, it is not necessarily outside the system. So there are two well quoted examples about threats to integrity, an accidental event which actually caused a threat to integrity was the New York stock exchange issue wherein somebody accidentally tried to sell a huge number of stocks and that went and uh, created, crashed down the servers and uh, it, it created an availability issue and an integrity issue. It was a very accidental thing. Similarly, one intentional uh, case study that is well reported and well uh, articulated in many information security literature is the logic bomb. There is an employee who, who wrote a software for a company in which he said in case I am dismissed he wanted to create havoc in the company. So what he did was that on 7th of every month if the software does not see his name in the payroll, in the pay, payroll list then it said go and delete all the files in the server. So he wrote a software like this. So on one fine month he was fired. The next month when 7th came the software did check if his name was there in the payroll, his name was not there in the payroll and so it went and deleted everything in the system. So this is an attack on the integrity, it is an intentional attack and that originated from within the system this is commonly quoted as the logic bomb. So to sum up what we have seen so far is the definition of confidentiality and potential threats to confidentiality and how we can maintain confidentiality and we are also looking at integrity, we have seen uh, <coughs> different issues of integrity and how we can try and maintain integrity. Now we will go to the third point of availability. What is availability? So we would like to come with a good definition of this. That the information should be available means it should be available to an authorized user and it should be available in the form that is needed by the user. The user wants to maintain some format he needs some integrity, confidentiality etc. And so and this data should be made available within some fixed amount of time. So all these things are involved when we try to define what is availability. So the information which is not available when required is of no use. Even if you say I have got the highest degree of confidentiality and integrity this information is of no use. So the question now comes what are the information that must be made readily available. So that forms one of the important ingredients of your security policy. What is it that I should make it available and how readily I should make it available? Should it be in days, hours, minutes or seconds? 
how much how much time should i return should i maintain the data should i back up the data when can i destruct the data all these things come as a part of your information security policy so with this as a background we will go and start defining availability so availability as you see is the property that the system services are accessible when needed without undue delay i said what is the data that should be available first data is the system services first information asset is the system services they should be accessible when needed without undue delay and with some more of what we saw in the previous slide we can say that the system services when it is requested by an authorized user should be available without undue delay and we can also go and add say the second facet of this definition where we need to prevent unauthorized attacks causing denial of service to other users so availability means for an authorized user the, the system services the information assets should be accessible when needed without undue delay and prevention of unauthorized attacks which can cause denial of service to other users so we have been using this word denial of service what do you mean by denial of service for example i have several computers within a, a office which are connected through a network now when one computer wants to talk to another computer it starts using the network note that this network is a shared resource if i am going to increase the traffic on a network traffic means the amount of data transmitted on the network beyond some threshold then what would happen the network will choke and because of this choking what will happen a computer a cannot talk to computer b this means that there is a availability issue and this is a security issue because we are not giving the availability of this now how can i create the traffic there can be another system within the local area network who starts sending arbitrary packets on the network which will go and choke the switch the network equipment and so the network equipment will be very busy handling these packets which are coming from this unauthorized source and so the amount of attention that network device can give for the communication between computer a and computer b essentially decreases so the the response time between computer a and computer b the response of computer b as perceived by computer a and the response of computer a as perceived by computer b will not be will not be as per the expectation and this is actually called denial of service the denial of service with respect to a particular system is completely external to the system but it can stop the system from communicating to the neighboring systems and and do an activity so this is one example of a denial of service we we will talk about many examples of denial of service as we proceed through this lecture now what we need is we need to get this confidentiality integrity and availability in the system and how do we get this we need to impose some control and this is called information security control for me to ensure confidentiality integrity and availability i need to put certain control mechanisms inside the system which will basically ensure me this why do we need this control this control becomes extremely important because we are using computers today for survival of many organizations if the computers don't exist if the computers are compromised the organizations cannot survive and if i don't have proper information control i will have data loss and the loss of data is very very costly i would have errors again the cost for this errors would be extremely high 
and I, I may not be there could be a denial of service I cannot even function and because of this wrong data as it mentioned earlier the data is used for making business decisions and if I go and corrupt the data then I could possibly make incorrect decisions which can hamper the growth of the organization and if I do not have control then what would happen is there could be an abuse from both inside the system and outside the system through things like hacking, viruses, unauthorized access etc. And the moment my system is abused, my all my information asset either can be destructed or they can be stolen, they could be modified, my operations can be disrupted, I could have unauthorized use of my assets and I can also have physical harm, the system can get burnt. So all these things can basically go and it is a potential threat to the organization, to the survival of the organization. Because now we are talking of more and more reliance on computer systems, information security based control becomes inevitable, we have to have such type of controls. And with these controls in place, we can basically talk of confidentiality, integrity and availability as our security goals. Now we will go and look at what are all the controls. So control is of two types, one is dictated by the administration, another is technical. Now COVID, actually an organization now comes out with uh, a definition of, uh, COVID is a standard, it comes out with a definition of control. Controls are actually defined as policies, information security policies, procedures that implement these policies, practices that comes out due to the procedures and the different organizational structures that are in place to maintain these policies, procedures and practices. So controls are defined as these policies, procedures, practices and organizational structures they are which are designed to provide reasonable assurance that the business objectives will be achieved and that undesired events will be prevented or detected and corrected. So the policies, procedures, practices and organizational structures form the part of the administrative control and once those things are in place, now to ensure that no undesired events undecided in the sense events that are prohibited by the policy, that are not stated in the policy, that are not part of any procedure or practice, so that type of undecided events will be either prevent, prevented or if it happens it should be detected and subsequently corrected. The technical control takes care of stopping these undecided events, while the administrative control defines what are decided, desired events and what are undecided events. So control when we look at from the broad, broad perspective is a, a combination of administrative and technical control. We will now talk more about this control as we proceed. Now what do you want to control? What is the goal of control? The goal of control is to maintain the CIA. Now let us look at the negation of this. It is to protect the system from what we call as DAD. C is confidentiality, the opposite of confidentiality is disclosure. I is integrity, the opposite of uh, integrity is alteration. A is availability, the opposite of availability is destruction. So I need control to maintain CIA is essentially to mean I need controls to protect the system from destruct, disclosure, alteration and destruction. So the control can also be defined in this form. So I need control to prevent or protect a system from destruction, disclosure, dis alteration and destruction and to ensure that any services is available 
within a prescribed time limit and the data is in a usable format or the information is in the usable format. So this is how I can define the role of control in a information security framework.